Hello, this is Kevin Ann at Eagle Strong Voice. It's January the 8th, 2022. A week today, the International Common Law Court of Justice will release its historic verdict and sentence in the case of the COVID police state and its roots in genocide in Canada, especially on the West Coast. Now this verdict and sentence will be released all over the world a week today, January 15th, 2022, which is the seventh anniversary of the establishment of the Sovereign Republic of Canada outside the criminal jurisdiction of the Crown of England and Canada on the basis of the previous conviction of the Crown of England, the Vatican, and the government and churches of Canada for crimes against humanity. Murderbydecree.com, all of the hard evidence of this has been made public for many years. But building on the work of that original tribunal and court, the upcoming verdict and sentence of the court involves the present COVID police state and how much of the technology around that criminal conspiracy was developed over the last number of years and decades on the west coast of Canada in conjunction with Pfizer Pharmaceutical and its corporate and military allies in China. My situation too and the recent attacks I've faced and health issues I've faced is very much related to this campaign. And let me give you some background about all of this. During 2020 and 2021, in the response to the COVID police state, the sovereign republic in Canada established over 40 self-governing local republic assemblies to disestablish the power of the crown and to recreate the rule of law and a new republic sovereign jurisdiction across Canada. Now on the West Coast, our work was severely attacked from the beginning and on Vancouver Island, all five of our Republic assemblies were destroyed and taken down in the space of a few months. Right on the verge of us releasing a lot of the information we had uncovered about the connection between Big Pharma, the COVID agencies and the Chinese government and military operating increasingly all over the West Coast of Canada. Literally the same week, we had issued arrest warrants against some of these actors who are going to be named in the court case you'll be hearing next week. Right on the verge of us releasing our initial arrest warrants against those individuals on Vancouver Island, the Parksville Common Law Assembly that issued the warrant was destroyed from within through classic black ops smear and misinformation campaign. The subsequent February, after we had held a protest at St. Paul's Hospital, where these COVID drugs were first tested out on involuntary Aboriginal test subjects, we had held a protest there to remember William Coombs, who was murdered in that hospital after describing the abduction of Native children by Queen Elizabeth. After we held the protest there, again, the Vancouver Republic Assembly was destroyed in the same manner. So these attacks followed every time we began to release information that the court will be releasing next week. This information involves the fact that the Chinese government for many years has been working with Pfizer Pharmaceutical, GlaxoSmithKline, and Roche Pharmaceuticals in organ transplant, organ trafficking, and the mass murder of indigenous people in British Columbia. There have been numerous uh, articles published recently showing the links between Big Pharma and the organ trafficking industry that murders thousands of people every year and the disappearance of native families in BC and the recovery of Aboriginal bodies missing organs. This has been on the record for many years. Well, we have concrete proof now of the links between Pfizer Pharmaceutical, the Chinese government, and the continued mass murder of indigenous people all over British Columbia today for organ trafficking uh, and also to grab the land and the liquid natural gas. All of this is in the indictment and the verdict that you'll be hearing next week, January 15th, when the information is released. Well, at the same time as these assemblies were being attacked, I was being personally attacked. I have survived two separate assaults on me involving chemical warfare. Last summer and during the fall, I was subjected to chemical attack, which had all the symptoms of cellulitis and staphylococcus infection. I had to be treated by massive doses of antibiotics, which invoked the present kidney stone that I am struggling with. This is being confirmed by military and medical uh, allies who we're working with. Uh, the medical reports on that will be filed in the court and is part of the uh, 
the judgment coming down next week. We name all 56 individuals uh, in the Crown of England, the Vatican, the Government of Canada, Pfizer Pharmaceutical, military officials, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, many other individuals who you'll be hearing next week when the common law court verdict and sentence is issued on January 15th. Now a final note on that, as part of the research and the investigation we've done, it's been established that the Vatican Assassination Bureau known as Santi Alianza, or the so-called Holy Alliance, has essentially put out a contract on me that I will die on or before February 21st, 22nd, which is a high point in the Ninth Circle Satanic Sacrificial Ritual Network operating out of Rome. We have that as solid proof, um, and this will be part of the verdict coming down of the court. Measures will be taken to confront those responsible for that assassination attempt and members of the court that have been meeting for the last five months in their deliberations. The court itself has been subjected to assassination attempts. So this is a very serious matter and we are making this public a week before the verdict is made known so that people can stand ready to assist in the enforcement and the protection of our court officers. And a final note on that, when people wonder how we enforce the verdict, as we have in the past against Pope Benedict who we forced out of office, Queen of England and others, we enforce it by establishing something different, by establishing our own sovereign jurisdiction, the Republic of Canada within Canada, that has nullified Crown authority, that has told the police and other authorities to stand down for their oath of allegiance and to take a new pledge to the Republic of Canada. And through our new courts and assemblies, we make the arrest against these criminal agencies and individuals who are still killing children today, trafficking organs in China and British Columbia, and other crimes that will be laid out completely next week, January 15th, 2022, the verdict of the International Common Law Court of Justice in relation to crimes against humanity in Canada, past and present, and the ongoing connection to the COVID corporate police state. Follow more at republicofcanada.ca under breaking news, murderbydecree.com under ITCCS updates. There'll be more coming. Stand by on January 15th for the verdict of the court. This is Kevin Annett, Eagle Strong Boys, standing, as always, fighting to the end for the children of the world and our future. Stand by for more.